And let's get things started. And I keep hitting the wrong button. There you go. So what we're going to talk about today, first, we're going to go through the requirements of ArcGIS Pro. I'm going to do this because not everyone in here probably has ArcGIS Pro on their machine. Some of you probably have Macs. Some of you may even have Ubuntu or running different versions of Linux. So there are some very specific requirements to ArcGIS Pro. So I want to make sure I cover them here. Then we're going to review the GUI again. For those of you who were in this previous session, you have an idea of what the GUI is or the graphical user interface. I'm just going to rehash that again for those people who are new. And then we're going to delve into the hands-on exercise. And in the hands-on exercise, we're going to get into introduction to mapping, advanced, advanced GIS and visualization, and how to create a really nice cartographic product, something beyond the standard um, ArcGIS project that you can quickly create by choosing all the defaults. Okay, so ArcGIS Pro 3.00 is new. Um, like I've alluded to before, it came out just last week. Uh, they, they released it last Thursday night. So once again, everything should work fine. Notice the key word I'm going to say is should. Um, we'll see. Um, it is a complete GIS package, just like ArcGIS um, Desktop was a complete GIS package. But unlike ArcGIS Desktop, they're all one application. It's ArcGIS Pro. It's not ArcGIS ArcMap. It's not ArcGlobe, ArcScene, and all those different applications. It's just one, and it covers all those things. It is a 64-bit application. Most of you on your PCs, if you're running Windows, most likely are running a 64-bit version of Windows. But if you are running a Windows 32-bit version, you will not be able to install or run ArcGIS Pro. So you have to have 64-bit version of Windows. And as I say here, it has to be Windows. Um, Esri, does, in general, does not develop for Macs or Linux except for their server environment. Otherwise, it's just Windows. And that's been that way for a long time. One thing I'll also hint at is ArcGIS Pro is tightly tied to the cloud. And when I mean that, I mean they're tightly, tightly tied to ArcGIS Online. You can do analysis with data from ArcGIS Online. You can easily um, do your own analysis and push those data and share it to ArcGIS Online. They're tightly integrated in how they function. We'll touch on that just a little bit, but we won't go too much in depth on that topic. So let's uh, review the graphical user interface. So otherwise known as a GUI. So basically, I think I mentioned this earlier, the graphic user interface, it's built upon the idea of views, panes, and ribbons. Very similar to, to Microsoft Office, that I, Microsoft Office came out with that about a decade or more ago, and ArcGIS has jumped onto that wagon and redid their graphical user interface. Um, the big thing is in ArcGIS Pro, you have one ribbon, you can have showing at a time, you can have one view showing at a time, but you can have multiple panes on the on displayed at one time. So the, the heavy lifter is the view, and then your ancillary areas are your panes. And in this case, to show that, this would be a pane, the contents pane. This would be a view, your map view, and then this is a catalog pane. And then here's the ribbon across the top. And I'll show you that in practice once we open up ArcGIS Pro. So the exercise data today that you're gonna be going, going through, this is data that was collected at the University of California Agricultural and Natural Resource uh, Extension Center at Lynn Cove, which is outside of Visalia, California. Lynn Cove is a research extension center that primarily is a research center for citrus and different types of citrus. And um, so what we did several years ago, we flew the area with our drones, our red edge drones, and the data have been stitched uh, and the underlying imagery has been provided for this workshop and we have used this data in other things. Um, and one, one note is I should mention is that the uh, research extension center is adjacent to the Sierra foothills. So it runs um, along the Sierras in the foothills, um, down south of Fresno, if you're familiar with California. It's south of Fresno, north of Bakersfield. Yes. 
Yes. Sorry about that, everyone. Full screen. So um, yeah, so we're going to be dealing with the uh, the Research Extension Center in California. And if I get this out of your way, you can see roughly where it's located by that red dot on the map. So here's an example of the map you're going to create in this exercise today. After you get through doing working with the drone data, dealing with multispectral data, doing some further analyses and enriching a layer of trees in Lincove. You're going to have a, a map that looks like this with a main area that contains the plots and the areas that you're dealing with, as well as an inset with a drop shadow, and then your basic map features, map surrounds like a legend, um, a legend, a scale bar, a north arrow, and some titles. Really straightforward, but a lot better than your generic map that you can create um, in general using ArcGIS Pro. So we're going to walk you through the steps of this so you can see how it goes and the guide walks you through all these pieces. As noted here, this plot that you see is one of the orchards and uh, it's, it's listed in your data as an orchard boundary. We're going to use false color infrared imagery. We have multi-band imagery that we collected. You will have access to the red, the blue, the green, I believe red edge and near infrared. And you will be able to use these data in these exercises. And with this data, you can then um, use that to work with classified citrus trees and some fictitious data on fruit weights. Okay, so those are the basics. Now we're gonna start delving into the hands-on exercises. So once again, let's do a quick overview of ArcGIS Pro, just so you guys can see the interface again for those who were not in the previous session. Let me close down the previous version of Pro and get everything else off my screen. Okay, so what you're going to do is find ArcGIS Pro. You can go down, click search, do a search in your um, in in Windows for ArcGIS. ArcGIS. And I, I apologize for this is Windows 11, so it's slightly different than your machines. And you can see ArcGIS Pro. You click on ArcGIS Pro, you'll see the splash screen, and then Pro will start up for you. If you open Pro and it asks you to log in and you do not have a login, please let us know. We can give you a temporary one to use. Once you get to the main screen, this is the place where you can open existing projects or create new projects. In my case, I have many, many, many existing projects, but you will probably have maybe one, uh, maybe two, but not many. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the new project area on your, on your screen, new projects. And for right now, you're gonna click on map. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create a new ArcGIS Pro project, and it's gonna automatically add a map to it. So if we click that, it's going to ask you to give it a name and the location where to create that map. That is weird. So right here, you give it a name that you want. It can be any name. So I'm going to call mine intro um, to ArcGIS. And you can call it uh, following the guide or whatever else other name you want to do. And then you're going to tell it where to save your project. You can type it in here, or you can use the browse functionality by clicking the folder on the, on the right-hand side. And then using the, um, browse, uh, the folder browse tool that comes up, you can go in on your machine, in my case, this PC. I'm gonna scroll down to the C drive, and I'm gonna choose the DC 2022. So that's the folder I want it to be created in. I'm gonna hit okay, and then you'll see that um, then you'll see that indeed the location is now set to that location. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to say create it. I'm going to make sure that create a new folder for this project is checked, which will make its own folder inside of DC 2022. And I'm going to hit okay. It'll take a few seconds, but it'll create a new project for you. 
and it's going to add the topographic base map as it stand as the standard base map for right now. And you'll see that on the left in the table of contents, you can see that indeed there is a world topographic map has been loaded on the left, as well as the world hillshade. And these are in terms of the Esri, um, Esri way of naming things, these are called base maps. I can turn these on and off. I could just have nothing. I could have a topographic map or the hillshade by itself or combine them together. And these are base maps. These are actually map services that are coming from ArcGIS Online. Once again, I mentioned there are panes, views, and ribbons. Here's an example of a pane, the contents pane, it's specifically called that. There is a catalog pane, a map view, and if you wanted to go in, you could see view, and you could see that there is a catalog pane as well as a catalog view. And keep in mind, I said you can only have one view visible at a time. In this case, you can see I can have a map open or the catalog view open, but I can't have them both open and viewable at the same time. Whereas I can have numerous panes. Also, as I uh, mentioned earlier, these are um, the context, the, the table of contents and the ribbon are context sensitive. So if I was to have a raster in here, a raster layer right now, you would see an additional ribbon item for rasters. If I have a, if I have a vector data in here, you will see an additional ribbon for features. And let me show you one other thing real quick. So our data is in a different location than this project. If I was to go to the catalog pane underneath folders, you'll see that there is a look, there's a link to the, this project folder called um, intro to ArcGIS. But if I want to link to the original data that we're going to use in this exercise, I can right click on folders and I can say add folder connection, which will give you an easy shortcut to the uh, data that came with this exercise. In your case, it's going to be on the T drive. I don't have a T drive, so I'm going to warn you, I don't have that. It should be T drive and you should see, I think it's Arc, it, I think it's intro to ArcGIS and you're, it's going to be a zip file. You're going to want to right click that file and say extract all and extract it to that location so you have it. And then what you can do is using the add folder connection, you can go in and in my case, I'm going to go to the DC 2022 folder. And I'm going to select the mapping to ArcGIS Pro folder, intro to ArcGIS Pro. That's my structure on my computer. And then what that's going to do, it's going to add a folder connection in my catalog so I can easily get to those data. Do you have any questions on that piece? I think the instructions go through that. I just wanted to walk you through it. Does that make sense so far? Okay. So now I've made that connection. And then what I want to show you now is the contextual ribbon. This is going to walk you through. We've already done a couple steps in the exercise. So let me quickly go in. I'm going to add a raster. In this case, I'm going to bring in the 64WDSM. You can drag and drop it over to the context menu. It'll add it. You can also right click and say add to current map. There's two ways to add your data. You can do this from the contents pane on the, uh, the sorry, the catalog pane on the right here now, or you could say add data. It's a, it's a matter of preference on how you want to do it. And I'm also going to show you right now, I'm going to add a polygon of the field that we're going to be working in. So I'm going to right click on it and say add to current map. And now we have a polygon. And what I want to show you here is if I select the digital surface model in my contents pane, what you'll see is you'll end up with a raster context, a, rast, a, a context ribbon as part of the ribbon, and it's going to be called a raster layer. And in there, if you click that raster layer, the items in your ribbon change to things that you can only do with rasters. So raster, raster specific functions and tools. If I was to click on the 64W, polygon layer of the field, that'll change from raster to feature layer. And once again, you'll have things you can only do with features. 
So ArcGIS Pro tries to help you and show you the tools that are most frequently used. And you can get to those by going to those contextual ribbons. And also just note the different tabs across the top and you can see how things are grouped. One thing you'll commonly use is map, the map tab, the insert tab, and the analysis tab. Those are things you'll commonly use, okay? So those are the basics of ArcGIS Pro in terms of the GUI or the graphical user interface. Do you have any questions about that? For those who used ArcMap, this is totally different, um, but it does get easier as you use it. Yes. Oh, yes, ma'am. That better? Okay. So now you've seen how to use the GUI, and I see a bunch of you are already going through your guide. So what I'd like you to do is slowly start working through the guide. As you have questions, as you, as you hit spots where you have questions, please let us know, raise your hands. That's why we're here. This is your opportunity to try to figure it out, and we're here to help you. Those online, same thing goes. We do have Justin here to relay questions to us or to answer your questions as they come up. So please, please ask questions as they come up. Those in the audience, raise your hand and we will come and, and help you as quickly as possible. How's everyone doing? Is the guide making sense? Questions? Okay. How about online? Is everyone doing okay? Okay, everyone in the room, so I should notice that some people are having problems finding the data on the T drive. Is that, if that's one of you, please raise your hand. Okay, we got one. Well, that's not bad. Okay, I can help with that. So, um, and what you'll notice as you get into it, sometimes you'll uncompress your folder and ArcGIS is already open. And when you go to that folder, nothing's there. So when that browsing window comes up, in my case here, if I show that, if I was to say add data, and let's say I went here and the intro to ArcGIS Pro folder wasn't showing up. One thing you can do, and it usually works if you know there's data there, click this refresh button and it'll refresh and then find everything that's underneath there. It doesn't always keep up to date. So you often have to hit this refresh button. So I just wanna point that out to people. Okay, and you have a question over here, sir? I'll be right there. That was brought up by someone. Okay. Everyone, someone just brought up a question where you're dealing with the merge, the com making a composite of the seven different band or five different bands in the text that says once you've created, once you've uh, processed your data in PIX4D. And the question was, do you have to use PIX4D to create those five layers? No. Any photogrammatic software that creates five layers or you deals with multispectral data and kicks out five separate layers or individual band layers you would use that composite band function to combine them together. So it does not have to be PIX4D. Yes. Okay, so the question was, um, in which order should you add the layers? For this exercise, we have um, five band data sets. It's, you're gonna have blue, green, red, um, red edge and near infrared. So you're gonna wanna add it in that order. So you're gonna do the blue layer first, followed by the green, followed by the red, then the, the red edge or RE, and then the last one will be near infrared. And then your resulting layer, that'll be your band order as well. Okay, yes, ma'am. Ooh, I apologize, what was that? Yes, yeah, you can process the images in any software. It doesn't have to be just Pix4D. Is that what you meant? Yeah. That was the last session, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, the issue is that's being brought to our attention is the 
the layer of trees does not have an object ID. It has a feature ID or an FID, and you should be able to join based on the FID, not the object ID, and it should work. I know. <laughs> They, they will join. You're not going to. So what's going to happen is if you don't have a corresponding number, it'll either drop it yeah. and you can choose that or the, the data just won't get attached. That's OK, because the tree layer is much bigger than that one project area. OK. Yeah, I I'm very impressed that that you interrogated the data and saw that yeah. because, yeah, it's there. Their points are going to drop out because of that. Just a quick note, um, one common thing I'm seeing is that when people are doing the composite bands, they're getting them in the wrong order. So then further steps down in the, in the guide, your results are different than what you'd anticipate. So be really careful when you do that composite band function that they're in that specific order of uh, blue, green, red, red edge, and near infrared. And then everything else should work, uh, should work properly. So be, be careful. How are the participants online doing? Do you have any questions, concerns? People in the room, are things going okay? Give me a thumbs up just so I know. If not, give me a, any other sign and we'll make sure someone helps. Uh-oh. One thing I mentioned to y'all is that you should be able to use any stitching software to get those individual bands. But one thing I do not know, because I've never tried it, I've never tried to stitch a multi-spectral multi image in ArcGIS Pro. So I don't know if it automatically creates that composite or if it also kicks out individual bands. So I know other programs, but I'm not sure about Pro because I never asked it to do it. Just a note. Uh, the question is, what do I usually use for multispectral? Pix4D, Pix4D mapper. Some of you may have an issue that was just brought to my attention. When you do that composite, it may be hidden underneath an existing layer that you have. I want to note that in ArcGIS Pro, basically rasters get, um, rasters are below polygons, which are below lines, which are below points. So when you add a raster layer, it gets added to the bottom. If you add a point layer, it gets added to the top. So they kind of add them in in the priority they expect. So if you had a polygon layer and created that composite bands, it might get inserted underneath your polygon layer and then you won't see it. So be careful if that's happened to you. Hello, everyone. Quickly, there's a, a window, an ArcGIS Pro.3.0 change. You'll find in your instructions when you're working with raster data, it says to click the appearance tab to do your custom band combinations. They apparently got rid of the appearance tab. So when you click on a raster, it just says raster and then it says data. It used to have an overarching thing that was called raster layer, and then you had a tab for appearance and a tab for data. So you just go to the raster layer and you'll find it. It's just no longer called appearance. Just a note to you. So for the people in this room who are using uh, licenses from the uh, CSU Monterey Bay, it appears that you may not have the spatial analyst license, which is the minus the canopy height function that you'll get to in here. That's okay, it's just for that one function. So if you can't do it, don't worry, just continue. It's just showing the functionality of raster functions and how they can be used. So you either need a image and a um, spatial analyst license or an image analyst license for that. And apparently the computers do not have that. Hello everyone online, how are things going? Um, please give me a thumbs up in, the, uh, in your reactions so I know. And if you have any questions, please let us know as well. And you can get to the reactions by the Zoom tab on the right-hand side. You should see a reactions tab. I see a couple thumbs up. Okay. Yeah, so please just let us know. And uh, if you have any questions, we are here to answer. Thank you. So everyone, we're starting to wind down. I'm noticing it's almost 10 minutes to five. I wanted to make a note for everyone that we have this thing called IGIS office hours. You might remember college when you would be at college, it'd be in office hours. You could walk into a professor, sit down and talk about the issue. 
We have office hours on Mondays and Tuesdays in the afternoon. They're half hour blocks. There's usually four of them. You can come in. It can be, it can be anybody, the public, ac other academics, whoever. You just submit, say, I want an hour. I want a half hour of your time. Here's my question. The team and I will sit down and be like, here are the people we need to address that question. We'll get on with you and try to help you solve your problem. Uh, we love doing office hours with people. So please, if you have a question, if you're going through these workshops, you get stuck, or if you just have a novel GIS question you're trying to work on and you're stuck, contact us. We love helping people. And uh, it could be GIS, it could be R, it could be Python, it could be a lot of things. So please reach out. That's why we're here. I'll leave it there and thank you all for coming.